Oh, Jesus. Hello? What's up, Big D? Hi, just chilling. Oh, yeah? Yeah, about to gym. I didn't get through almost anything today. Nice. Well, how are you, you going? Are you growing nice and big and strong or what? Uh, hopefully nice and strong and not big again. <laughs> I lost like 30, no, 25 pounds. So I'm trying to chill around there. Yeah, but I've lost a lot of weight also. Uh, mainly, um, you know, the ADHD medicine helps a lot with that. Nice. Welcome to the club anorexia. What's up? And How's life going? I've become a, uh, <clears throat> like a home construction god. That's why the name is Bob Vila in this Discord. Okay. I like, I redid my deck. So I have a ground based deck. Did I already say this? Did I say this last time I was in here? I don't remember. I don't think so. You can say yes or no. Huh? I don't think so. Okay. You know the deck I have in my backyard? I don't think so. Have I ever seen it before? Well, you've been at my house and you've walked on it. That's okay. You don't remember it. It's fine. It's a big deck and I. Wait, what is it? Is it leading out of your house towards the pool? It's like a ground level deck. Who would know it if you saw it? It's a and ground there's... level deck. I'll like, you, you just mean the ground? Um, no. How... Hold on. God damn it. Now you're making me go and, like, uh, find this. What do I search for? Deck. I know what a deck is. It's usually yeah, something that's built up. It's not like the ground. Photos. I've never heard of the ground called, like, a deck before. It, because I'm not talking about the ground. Okay. Okay. I have, hold on. Copy image. Where are you? Destiny. Omni. Do you remember this from my backyard? This section? Oh. We don't, would I call that a deck? It is absolutely a deck. Huh. Interesting. It is ground bubble, so. Would but... I call that a deck? Is the deck only the wooden part here, or would you consider the tiles a deck as well? No, just the wooden part. Am I allowed to show this picture or no? Uh, let me take a look at it. Yeah, you can show it. Would you guys call this a deck? I feel like a deck has to be elevated, like definitionally, I feel like it. Oh. I think most people are saying yes. Hmm. I'd say well, terrace. It, okay. Sorry, go ahead. It's, anyway, it's elevated going. by like five inches. Oh, which is patio. Not... Ooh. Would no, this be patio a patio instead of a deck? A patio is Oh, yeah, stones? that video. You can see. Uh, yeah, a patio. Well, hold on. To me, I feel like a patio has stones. Man, maybe I could be wrong on that patio area i guess you could say oh he's out in the patio but if i went out to the patio and there wasn't like stones there i feel like i would be there better be at least bricks huh hold on can a deck be ground level or what inlet inlaid a ground level deck is a great way to add some livability to your backyard Oof. i don't know man okay sorry go ahead um, yeah, I completely fucking redid that whole thing. The top level is called Ipen, which I think is similar to Teak. So very, very hard wood. Okay. And below that was like uh, pressure treated stuff and it all had rotted away. So basically I ripped all of that up and that's like 10,000 screws that I removed. Jesus. So I did that. Then I went to Home Depot and I got like a hundred four by fours. Not a hundred, obviously. Two by fours. I got some four by fours. Anyways, I redid the whole thing myself. And uh, then I've taken up plumbing. I learned how to do welding. Um, so my, I've basically been learning everything there is to learn about home repair so that I can, you know, do more stuff myself. Mm -hmm. um, and it's good. It's a good, good thing. And it helps you lose weight and stay busy and focus on other things that aren't online. Which are good. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if you enjoy it, that's your the next evolution of Dan is uh, being a little no, I don't think so. construction I think, worker, a little builder. I think um, next evolution of Dan is coming back a little bit. I'm feeling it a little bit, you know? Here's the problem. Um, 
natural instinct of a lot of things is to feel like to take the easiest path with a lot of stuff. Like, you know, you don't want to take any flags, so you just kind of let something go, that type of stuff. Uh -huh. Sometimes maybe it's good to be the noisy wheel, you know, okay. to s stir some shit or whatever to be in there. And I, I know I did that a while. I saw like I won the chaotic neutral award type of thing. It's just maybe it's a little bit too boring. You know, if you live life boring, you're just going to die like, oh, well, that's it. So, yeah, I, th I think that's uh, that's it. I don't know. You want to be not boring. Yeah. Well, you can thank your uh, <laughs> obsessed haters, I guess, for today. Once again, I'm sure you've seen it. Bring me back into the fold. I was in the trenches, Steve. Yeah. I know I shouldn't have been, but... Do you want to talk about it, to... or...? No, just... For right now, I'm letting it chill. Okay. But, uh... You know. If I go to Israel in uh, May, do you want to come with me? Me and Loner Box? Man. Man, that is a lot higher stakes than when I went there and visited all the DGGers. <laughs> when I went there, I was already a little bit like, oh my god, please, 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 please. Now... Wow. Um, I'll think about it. How about that? That's good. All right. Yeah, I'll think about it. Um, can you give me the cliff notes of uh, what happened today? With um, you, you found some information or something like that? Oh, just after my... Oh, it's just annoying because everybody... Norm wasn't able to respond to anything I said. So it's just all personal attacks on our conversation. And then afterwards, everybody online is just like all like, oh, isn't this a guy whose wife fucks black people? Or isn't this a guy who sexually rapes people, I guess? Or isn't this the guy who... Like, it's just like all random personal shit, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, this is kind of weird, but all right. Mm -hmm. um, and then somebody emailed me like, hey, it's kind of funny that Norm has this insane fucking history of like crazy litigation and shit like that. And no one has like ever seemed to call him out on it. I'm like, what, what do you mean? And then... Um, this guy uh, basically sent me a, a court filing in a, in the New York in a New York City District Court um, District Court, is that what you call it? and yeah, it's just like unhinged. Basically, the short story is as I was going through it, the first one is just Norm claiming that his neighbors are being super noisy, and then finally he files a civil suit against them for like defamation and a bunch of shit and damages from trauma. So has this been known about by anyone or not? I don't know. I've never seen anybody talk about this before. I Googled a little bit. I couldn't find anything about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but then sure it was funny because when I saw another, the... Another Norm Finkelstein. No, it's definitely... Oh, it's definitely him. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Um, you know, it might be a somewhat common name. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, go ahead. Him, yeah. The, um, but uh, so I was like kind of... It was just kind of funny looking at the... Um, looking at his complaint. I was like, okay, whatever. But then when I saw the counterclaim, it was unreal. Basically, Norm felt like... Um, Norm felt like his neighbors were being too noisy, which I can sympathize with. That could be annoying. But then apparently... He decides to, because they've got uh, Hispanic last names, and I guess they're brown, he decides to call immigration to see if he can get them deported. He calls Child Protective Services to say that they're uh, mistreating their child. He uh, tries to call the government and claim that their businesses are fraudulent. He's threatening them, saying that if your babysitter doesn't pay taxes, the government's going to find out and you're going to get deported. And uh, he hammers their door at one of the times where he breaks a hammer and tries to smash the door or whatever. And there's like, they've got pictures of like the holes in the door. It's just like this whole unhinged escalation of events. Some of the notes that he's leaving, like if you want, if you want to make all this noise, go get a cage in the Bronx Zoo. I'll bring you some bananas. And then like three notes later, he's like, no apes are sleeping tonight or whatever. And I'm like, what the fuck? It's like the most unhinged set of fucking things I've seen in my entire life. So did uh, he get sued or did he sue them? Uh, he, so apparently the, he got arrested outside their door. And then I think that they wanted to file a complaint with the city. And I think they were in the process of that. But then eventually they just move. And then they contact the DA and they say, we just want to drop our complaint. We're done with this. Um, and then afterwards, uh, Norm, after they'd already moved, he decides to file a civil suit against them. And so they counterclaim on the civil suit saying, well, look at all this crazy shit this guy's done. This is insane. And then eventually the suit gets dismissed by the court with prejudice. So he can't refile. So whatever. But yeah, it's just unhinged. Yeah. Interesting. So it just went away, I guess. Yep. But it's just funny because um, 
like the notes, the the things that Norm put were fucking hilarious. Like in one of these notes, he's like, you've messed with the wrong guy. Uh, I guarantee you that you don't know who you're talking to. You need to Google my name and look me up on YouTube. I'm Norm Finkelstein. <laughs> it's just like, fuck. I'm going to start using that one in my Holy threatening messages. Shit. Yeah, it was unhinged. Um, you, it's crazy. It feels like this one year has to be probably the biggest movement of your reach ever, well, right? This is true you remember how long year, you, right? were, Isn't this... you were? No, you were hard stuck at 3K <sighs> for like 10 years. I wasn't I mean, hard no. stuck. I was a league professional grinding no. on the rift. You were. This was even pre-league. You were a 3K Andy, if you were lucky, even sometimes. I think you're... That is not true, but okay. How long do you think you were at 3K for? I'm not sure if I was maybe in the first year or two or whatever my streaming, but I think once I hit about, if my memory serves correctly, once I hit four to six K average doing StarCraft way back, probably 14 years ago in 2021, 2022, 12 or 13 years ago, um, after I switched to league, I think I dropped to between one to two K and then I just slowly kind of climbed from there. If I was ever a three K Andy, it was just on days I was playing league. But I think if we were doing entertaining stuff, we could always Dude, go is like, my memory that fucking bad? I could have sworn it was around 3K. Because there were long stretches of time where I played a lot of League. <laughs> Why would you do that? Because I, I was ready to grind. I was a victim I'm, I got of the a question. Rift. Do you actually play that? Do you still play that game, like, but in the background now? No, you can't. Play. That's like asking if you shoot up heroin on your free time. Hmm. I see. Um, okay. So no games. You don't play any games anymore at all. Just um, not really, no. The pure... By the way, what is the dosage you're on of Ivance? 60. Holy shit. I'm on 20. Damn, I'm 20 bigger than like, you. I don't even feel 20. Well, it's just about your brain. I don't think about how big you are. But First off, my brain is bigger than yours. Okay. I don't mean how That's... big your brain is. <laughs> yes, you do. Okay. Um... <clears throat> uh let's see so yeah you know um yeah. <laughs> i'm just trying to think about what else i want to talk about today um hmm. Hmm. yeah hmm. um Wow. Oh, your blacklist. Who's on it now? Mm. The full. Can you give me the full scope? It's not very entertaining, but I just I just want a quick rundown. Fuentes. I bet some... I'm not talking to him there's anymore some... ever because his uh, community engages in deplatforming. Fuck that. I'm not messing with anybody mm -hmm. that does mm -hmm. that shit. Sam Cedar. I just think he's too bad faith. What listening to him summarize my conversations afterwards is just cringe as fuck. I'm, I think I'm just done ever talking to. Um, I feel like okay, I would Cedar. remove that guy from no, the list. No, I'm good. You're you're upset, and I'll tell you. Here's my thing. I think you're upset because he's probably one of the only people on this list that you actually somewhat respected, and you're probably fucking floored when he didn't like agree with you or something. Because I mean, we had the debate with him; he was fine. And I it's have like, no it, issue with him agreeing with me or not agreeing with me. What no, I have no, an issue with not, is when he goes I mean. to his show afterward. Well, that's what you said. When he goes okay. to his shows afterwards, he characterizes my position insanely. That's my issue. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm over it. Um, Andrew Wilson, uh, he's just a crazy, like weird red pill guy. I'm just, it's too much like drama gossip. Um, there's a guy called Coach Red Pill, Gonzalo Lira, that I debated, and his takes were all just unhinged. But also, he's dead now, so fuck him. Um, we should remove him from the list. Nope. I'm never talking to him. He again. stays in there? Yeah. Well, what if <laughs> yeah, in the future, well, what if somebody figures out how to do like seances or makes a Ouija or, or the Ouija board or whatever fucking work? I'm not okay. going to go back and have to re add him because we can communicate with the afterlife. Uh, Alex Stein, just weird guy. Anybody that like obsesses over my wife or makes weird comments like that, especially in person, is fucking weird. So fuck that. Um, Zerka, too far and his career is gone. Fuck him. Do you think he can Zerka come back? I don't even, I no. haven't seen him. He was, um, he was all over the place for a while, but I actually haven't. What has he been up to lately? Do you know? No, I think he's hiding in BC because he knows that if he comes back to the US, he might get arrested. So he's fucked off and gone for Wait, her. what? Why would he get arrested in the US? That uh, fight? Because, yeah, he had a huge fight. Uh, that was all Is on there, stream like, and everything. Is there an arrest warrant out for him? I don't know if there's a warrant or not, but I know he had a huge fight on camera. And I think he's had a couple. So, yeah. Um... So yeah, fuck that. Um, Fanatic, I'm tired of race baiting. And Fanatic is like just the most boring, like constantly saying I'm racist, blah, blah, blah. So I'm done with that. Any cry bullies, bored. 
Um, Lav is on the blacklist. We brought her back for a little bit, but it's just unless she's got like somebody to synergize with, she is super fucking boring. Uh, fuck that. Uh, Nico Sam, unhinged chatter, trying to spread weird personal information about me, but he calls it a meme, and he's also just in general schizophrenic and fucking weird. Is he actually? I think I follow him. Yeah, he's super yeah. schizophrenic. Um, Lauren De Laguna, we just had a weird personal falling out, and she is like threatening to like sue me and just weird, stupid shit. And Wait, it's what? Stuff. Yeah, it's it's more cringe than you can possibly imagine. Have you um, given details or? No. There are no details, and it will never happen because it's just. Well, I mean, why stupid. the details of like why is she threatening to sue you? Type of thing. Like, like I'll type it to you, and it doesn't even make sense. Um, uh, hold on. <clears throat> it's interesting for me because I don't. I've never even met some of these people. It's not even possible. You do need to get that thing taken care of. By yeah, I know, but it's like she can't. It's just fucking retarded. But like, not like it just. It's just. It's just salty. It's just stupid. But, um, and then I've got a super blacklist for Ooh, bad empanada and blacklist. President Sunday. Um, once I write these up, super blacklist means I don't associate with you, and I blacklist anybody that associates with you for some number of weeks or months. I haven't decided. Is that yet. like is that like the um, the thing you did before with? Um, I was thinking about doing it before, someone. and then I ultimately dropped it because I felt like it wasn't yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a good precedent. So like, if someone goes on one of their shows, you won't even talk to that person anymore. Uh, not for there'll be. I think in order to make this work, there have to be three components. One is I have to have a really good reason for super blacklisting them, which for these two people I do. Um, for bad empanada, he doxes people and tries to direct real life harassment and threats to them, which is insane. Um, and President Sunday will also dox people, hunt down their jobs, impersonate people from their jobs and try to get them fired if you debate him and he disagrees with you, which is insane. I think they're bad for the industry. I don't want them anywhere in my life. And I would highly question the judgment of other people that associate with them heavily. So I just don't want anything to do with those people. Um, so one is having a good reason. I think the second thing is having, I don't think a super blacklist can ever be indefinite or permanent. It's probably gotta be time restricted. Or the third part is they probably have to have a way back off the super blacklist onto at least the normal blacklist. I think that if I could get all three of those criteria, it down i think i'll be okay i just need to take a minute to like write this down why is mr girl not on there uh he's just irrelevant he doesn't need to be on a blacklist or he's just irrelevant well that's not you can't say that when you have the fucking dead dude on your blacklist seance he could come back who knows you're being contrarian right now i just like seeing so is he i just not like on seeing my that's, i like seeing my dead blacklist. i like seeing my dead opponents there no mr girl's okay. not on the blacklist right now no. okay so that means there could be Another, I mean, that would be an interesting conversation, though. Um, maybe. How would that one go, you think? Let's say he reached out to you today, Destiny. I'd probably do it for content. Hell yeah. It's been a while. For content? You would do it. Maybe. I'd think about it. I'd have to think about it. I was doing my impression there. Um, okay. So he. Well, Listen, I Lab guess... is back to doing a podcast with him, apparently, so anything's possible, I guess. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Um, and then you had journalists there. Oh, these are just like publications and journalists, writers, people that you shouldn't trust. Anything they write out of um, just I wouldn't trust it. You have to fact check everything. So if you saw anything written by Brian Grimm, Jeremy Scahill, Max Blumenthal, and then for publications, these are publications that you shouldn't trust that make claims. You should fact check everything they put. I would never accept that as a source. Like The mm -hmm. Intercept, The Gray Zone, Oct 7th Fact Check, Mondavis, uh, and then The Federalist. I should have better reasons here, but I'll build that on the future. But I just want to have like build like a little. And actually, and it's nice because when people are like, "Oh, who, what publications do you read about?" I say, "Well, here's ones that I wouldn't trust." So good luck. Interesting. Um, Thomas James for two dollars said you got absolutely dog walked. You debate nerd. You have anything to say to him? True. If you get dog walked what is that i guess i can kind of understand the thing uh they two dollars by the way thomas yeah uh that somebody basically like handheld you through an entire conversation and schooled you yeah what i don't get is is it it's not a good sign with a guy who couldn't remember your name <laughs> Like he kept changing it, but he towards the end, name. he actually started remembering it. There was, well, the most important thing. I'm so glad Lex left this in. I love Lex. 
Even if for all for any problem you have, I I love Lex. Okay, Lux left in the when the cameras were still rolling, and I thought we were off camera. One, I thought it humanized me and Benny a lot. I don't know how many people even watched the full debate, but it was really nice to catch that exchange between us. And then two, it showed once Norm was off camera, very quickly, very sharply, he referred to me as Mr. Bunnell, uh, with correct pronunciation and everything. I was like, wait, what? So I'm glad he left that moment and fuck him. What a stupid game to play. So is uh, Finkelstein on the blacklist? No. Can you possibly debate with that guy? If I had a one-on-one, -on -one, like absolutely. It, will, it, will, it would be it would be fun. It would be too. a streaming match. Yes, be but it would be Neither really fun. I don't care. It would be just... super fun. In a one-on-one -on -one environment, it would be super fun. Hmm. I, I feel like nothing would get accomplished there. Of course not, but it would be mean filled and hilarious and epic. How did um the what was the other your debate partner's name? Benny Morris. How did he feel about your performance afterwards when he talks to you? Was he like, wow, you're the most informed Wikipedia reader I've ever met? Or No, he was fine. We talked a ton. We've already had one conversation on stream. And then I talked with him like three or four hours the night before to make sure that I ran through all of my notes and everything, make sure that I had a good understanding of everything. So yeah, he had fun. He, he said it was funny. It was, you know. Interesting. Um, yeah. And you're... You're a single man now as well. Indeed. That's kind of wild, huh? Yeah, crazy. I thought all my money was going to disappear and I was going to get sued into oblivion and all this crazy stuff that didn't happen. Wild. What is, um, what's the deal with your podcast with Erudite? When is it? What's it, what's it about? I didn't see the first one, which I probably should try and do, but. Uh, we rolled one episode out and now we're just like basically iterating on camera angles, production, everything. Uh, I think it's, it's going to try to be more professional, basically just inviting people on having conversations. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's going to be on the more boring professional side, I think. I did, I did get a, a whiff of that being the case, but you guys, you can spice it up a little bit. I don't. You guys just got to. Uh, hmm. If you don't get crazy guests, that means you guys got to be the like a little bit more exciting, right? Well, the thing. Um... The perspective that I'm thinking about through. Also, I had like no involvement with anything until my debate because I've been like religiously. Oh my god, that's so that's so shocking! I can't believe it. You doing nothing at all for preparation of a podcast? Yeah, I know, that's crazy. Because I don't do anything in my life ever. It's not like I was trying to cram the entire history of your dog shit fucking country that I hope sinks into the fucking Mediterranean for the past four fucking months so that I could debate these you know, losers. If okay? there was any justice, so, the Jews would have Germany. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, I was focused on that, but now that I have more free time in the evenings, uh. After stream and before stream, I'm a little bit more involved in trying to figure out how I want everything to work. So, yeah. Okay. So, any like based guests coming up? Um, yeah, we've got Brian McBeth coming. It'll be fun. But I'm just trying to iterate to make sure that the formula and everything works really well. And then once everything works really well, then I'll try to like push for big, big people. Um, do we have, is it Ed and Brian Crastine? Oh, they might be confirmed for the 5th of April. That was now. such that's such an interesting dynamic. <laughs> like the two brothers of them as your debate partner and that thing. That was like that was a little weird. Mm -hmm. Was it weird for you or no or was it fine? Um, it was okay. The brother thing is it's very strange to me. I can't get over it. Oh yeah. I'm kind of jealous. I when people have like really close sibling relationships and everything, I think that's cute. And 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 they did really well, like all considering, mm -hmm. I think. So, yeah. Uh, um, what are the big things that you have coming up? Like, you know, obviously you've gone, th you've blown your load on a lot of the big shit already, but what's coming up now? Like real big stuff. Well, this month I'm trying to chill the fuck out because I traveled like 20 days last month and I killed my monthly viewership, but it was fine. I was doing a lot of important stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, for, I'm not trying to take on any huge research projects because I, I, the Israel-Palestine stuff was rough, so I'm doing like smaller research things. So like right now, I just want to have good answers relating to college and if people should go to college and what that situation looks like. And then I want to do reading on like immigration policy and border stuff in preparation mm -hmm. for, I would say, the next month and the coming months are going to start to be big on the election. So learning stuff, facts and stuff around the election are going to be really important. You may, um, you may find yourself being on traditional TV more. Have you thought about that? Uh, I'm trying to strike a balance. Uh, my goal is to be kind of a leech. I'm trying to gain popularity from these platforms to bring people to funnel to my own. I'm not trying to go to those platforms. 
Uh, I just, it's just not as enjoyable for me at all. I don't like these very stiff media things. I don't mind the one-on-one -on -one things. So like I'm talking to peers, smokers and stuff about maybe going to London and doing a show one-on-one. -on -one. I think that might be fun, but like mm -hmm. these like very stiff, like pro uh, mainstream media kind of stuff is, I don't know, it's, it's like, it, it's like I can feel good and jerk off about it, but like whatever. I, I'm more interested in like, like it's very annoying that the conversation that I just had with that uh, Robinson, Robinson? Uh, the guy that I just talked to was better than any conversation I've had with like mainstream people almost about um, about Israel Palestine, and that seems to be the case. Well, except for Mark Lamont Hill, that was a good one. But that seems to be the case more often than not that these kind of alternative conversations I can get more in depth and I can have a funner back and forth than than the mainstream stuff that's so surface level. So, I think the problem with the Israel Palestine stuff as well is that um, it seems like most of the people you've debated don't really want to give any solution. Like if you press them, like okay, so what do you want to what do you want to have happen? There's not a lot of answers there. Like they won't say, oh, you well, you got to kick all the Jews out and give it back or anything. It's just a lot of you know, well, they got to figure it out. It's like, well, yeah, no shit. But uh, why why do you think so many people refuse to give an answer on like what should happen in an ideal world? Um, to without getting all into it, it's because at the end of the day, all of these things are just kind of like emotional positions that people have on things that have nothing to do with the conflict itself. So like if I were to invent two countries, if I were to say you've got Mazikstan and Dazikstan, and Mazikstan is a group of people that have been fighting Dazikstan forever, and Dazikstan is supported by the United States, then all of a sudden they would become the aggressors and the other party would become the sympathetic ones, and then people would have strong positions because they don't like U.S. foreign policy or whatever bullshit, and that's it. Don't, nobody actually cares about or knows anything about the underlying conflict or has any strong opinions on any of the fact of the matter. It's just all virtue signaling. So that's why. So why would there be? How could you have a real solution if you don't even know what the problem is? For, like, um, I don't. I don't yeah. think that's the reason why. I think because the reason why is they don't want to give a solution is that most of the solutions are going to be kind of genocidal or nope. like un, unreal. You don't nope. think so? No, absolutely not. There are definitely solutions. What do you, what do you there think, are like, real pathways most... through, but nobody wants to talk about it because they'd rather talk about apartheid, genocidal conditions, and concentration oh, okay, camps. Fine, but what? Uh, what? Uh, what do you think they have for a solution? You, you there has to think be, they just don't have one? What has to happen that's never happened ever is there has to be pressure on the Palestinian side to make peace. And that has never existed in the history of Palestinians. And until that changes, likely nothing will change. Um, Here, here's yeah. the thing I don't get, right? So uh -huh. there's a it's a large percentage of Gaza is under like what, twenty or something like that? Like a huge percentage of it? You know this number. And oh, Gaza is under what? Age 20. Oh, it's supposed to be like half the population, supposedly. With that, no, like with that in effect and knowing that like their entire lives that these people have had hatred for Israel, do you really think that level of learned hatred could go away for peace? This sounds like a weird thing to say, and I don't have the historical background to say it. So I'm going on vibes here, okay? Uh -huh. But it feels like people get over shit surprisingly fast. Like, I don't, if I, I were to read that. about the United States Civil War, my assumption would be that it would take 50 years for the country to heal and come back together. But, like, Reconstruction stuff afterwards, it happened a lot quicker than I would have assumed. If you look at, like, World War II in Germany, I would imagine, mm -hmm. wow, these people are going to hate Germany fucking forever. But pretty quickly, the world kind of moves on. I think that... When people are confronting the realities on the ground and when people are, you know, allowed to be happy, healthy, eat and like do things and go to school and blah, blah, blah. I feel like in about a generation or less. It's actually sometimes not, it's not a bad stuff. point. Yeah. I feel like um, Japan, U.S. relations went back pretty quick for sure to yeah. being decent right after World War Two. Uh -huh. But um, I don't know. It's just it's so it's you have to think most of the people in Gaza right now probably like have a friend or a relative that was killed. Do you think that's true? Yeah. That the average person there well, knows someone no. that was like, well, you don't think that's true. Know someone. The problem is that our brains are really fucked about the numbers in this conflict. If, how many so, people are there? In Gaza is 2 million. <laughs> and how many people has uh, Israel killed? Total? In yeah. every conflict? Well, no, let's just go. I want to say 40, in the last, maybe 50,000, 40 or 50,000. In the last the year, last maybe 30,000. So that's like one in 10, right? That means if you know 10 people, one of them should be dead. Okay, hold on, almost. It's like one in 80, I think. Uh, one in 100. Two million, 
if you assume 20 or something? If 20? there's 2 million and it's 20K, that would be, you'd have to times 100. Yeah, so one in 100. So do you think the average person knows 100 people? No. And the deaths are probably somewhat localized. It's probably not evenly spread throughout the entire population, right? Um, They're probably kind of clustered or concentrated around some population things. Is it? I feel like I thought it was pretty widespread. All the shit there. Oh, I'm guessing. I don't know 100%. It's possible everybody. Somebody I thought knows you knew at least one all person. this stuff. How do you? Know? I don't know the average number of people known by you a should. Gazan citizen. And my bad. Okay. You sh well, you should because that's see that's an important thing. In my mind, imagine that me and you were here, and it's like you know both of us knew someone that was killed by Canadians. I would be quite not okay with like normalizing relations if that was the case. I understand, right? and it feels that way, but I think we move on pretty quick. That just seems to be the human condition. Like people that get paralyzed, that lose both their legs, people that have like crazy things happen to them, like we tend to actually acclimate and become normalized like pretty fast. <laughs> it's pretty you're weird. Just like, you're, you're doing like, you, so you want Western accelerationism in Gaza, basically. You want as many McDonald's as possible in there as fast as possible. Um, well, there has to be like a permanent political settlement between the Palestinians and the Israelis. That has to happen. No amount of like capitalism or aid or anything else will change that until there's some like final settlement of, of like this issue, I think. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Interesting. Um, <laughs> do you know who Daniel Negreanu is? Yeah, I do. Poker oh. guy. Yeah, I like what that dude. Him? That'd be funny. He retweeted the um, the docs about Finkelstein today. <laughs> That's funny. Did he really? Yeah, I just I retweeted it. Um, I think he's real kid poker. Yeah. Is that getting any traction, that whole thing oh i don't know i doubt it will lefties don't give a fuck but it if i had court docs of me saying too bad apes of me trying to contact immigration and cps on a couple people because they look brown like it's not like finkelstein knows that they're illegal he doesn't know anything about cps or if their children child is being uh abused he says basically in all of his writings that he's just doing this as a threat to make them go away i would be excoriated it would be insane i mean you're already fucked anyways they already assume you're a nazi no, right. but I'm saying that like if if I had um they don't they don't need anything more. You're already uh you're Hitler. regardless, if I had these court docs about me, these would be screamed to the end of the earth. It would be insane. And they would be added to the list probably midway down somewhere after the DDoS kid and mm, before the I think these would probably be at the top of the list. I think comment. these would be right at the top of the list. An actual mm -hmm. court filing of me claiming of trying to bang down a door with a hammer for a couple of Hispanic people, I guess, that I say that I call immigration on and CPS on. The question is, you know, there's two things I think here. You think this might have an impact, but um, wasn't it um, uh, Brianna? Joy Gray had the whole thing with Virgil Texas and never brought it up again after that point, and that hasn't affected her at all. So is this had more that thing? I thought Virgil Texas was the wrong one there. No, he, he was, but they were they had a show together. Yeah, right? isn't Virgil like gone from the online communities? Yeah, he is, but like I think like her page, for instance, still like mentions him prominently. Why? Because I don't like, think whatever bad, came up, I don't think it really page. involved him at all. Now, what? What are you talking about? What was their big? What was was wasn't Virgil like creepy to a girl or somebody said he tried to yeah, play yeah, with a sixteen some, year old some, or something some stupid? Some shit like that. Or probably and then an eighteen year old. You know, the way if you is. search like "Where's Virgil" on Twitter, there's like a million fucking posts about it. Yeah, Apparently, but wait, what's your? I don't understand. Adjusted. What's your point? Um, so the point was this was like a very at the time, I guess. I don't even remember what the fuck happened, but uh, you know, this was like a really huge news. Like one of the Chapo guys was sexually abusing some girl or some shit like that, grooming, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all the pressure was going direct to um, Ribri basically being like, hey, why are you doing a fucking podcast with this person? What the fuck? And basically, she just never made a statement, never did anything about it. Yeah, because um, she followed never... the destiny school of thought. She knows exactly what you're yeah, supposed but, to do, but, which is don't acknowledge so... it, keep making content, and keep moving the fuck on. Yeah, no, I, I understand. I haven't been following that strategy today. But anyways, um, I understand that that happened. But when you do that, you would assume that would have bigger consequences. Like, when can you in the future ever talk about um, anything having to do with like sexual abuse or something like that? when you're her and you would assume that someone could just bring this up and be like, Hey, well, you know, you didn't do anything about it. Didn't it that you. kind of happen to her when she tried to do it with, I'm trying to remember if I'm making this up. Or not. No, 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 never mind. This was with Anna Kasparian. Anna Kasparian, I think tried to call out, um, the weird guy, not Glenn Greenwald, uh, the other weird guy, 
the crazy guy. Fuck, what's his name? Somebody will say it in chat. Wow, Edmund, thanks for the 50 bucks again. I love you, buddy. Jimmy Dore. Yeah, I think uh, they tried to call it Jimmy Dore, and then they mentioned something about how Jank or Anna or somebody let sexual harassment happen in the office or some shit. I don't know. For Brianna Joy Gray, she just doesn't talk about shit like that. She's like, I think she's more on the Marxist side, so she's not like on the wokey thing, so she doesn't fixate on Me Too and shit like that as much, I, I think. So she probably just doesn't stumble into those issues. So I guess the question is, does this come up at, at all in future Norm debates, and how does he handle that type of thing? No, if this would never come up. Come up. The people that really? like Norm don't like Norm for any good reason. It's just because he reaffirms the positions. Well, let me ask you, let's say you had another debate. Would you bring this up? Absolutely. I would meme this shit into the fucking ground. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anytime he raises his hand towards me, oh! oh, I thought you had a hammer again, Norm. My bad. Like, holy shit. I would go so fucking hard. Oh my God. I'd probably pick up the phone in the middle of the debate of him screaming like, hold on one sec, one sec, one sec. Calling my kid's mom. Oh, CPS isn't there. Okay, great. Thanks, Norm. Like I would, dude, I would mean this shit into the ends of the earth. I'd have to call my mom. It's still Bunnell, right? Not Gonzalez, right? I don't want Norm to come after you, mom. You, you know, it's okay that my mom's Cuban, right? That's fine with you, right? Oh my God. It would be so much fun, but I'll never have a debate with that guy again. He'll never talk to me, guaranteed. But yeah, if I talk to him, never I would- Never happen again, basically. Absolutely. It will never happen again. But if I did, I would mean this into the ends of into the ends of the earth for sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, only if he went in on me first. Interesting. All right. Um, so, what else is there of interest? I know I'm probably I'm probably keeping you. You wanted to fuck off like what, like 15 minutes ago? Is that right? Oh uh, yeah, but it's a short term day, so it'll take a little bit. You're okay. Hmm. Um. Well, yeah, just keep power. That's just what's the destiny strategy again? Can you tell it to me? I want to I want to I want to learn strategy for what? Uh, dealing with online stuff. Go ahead. Just power through it. What do you mean? <laughs> power through it. That's the strategy. The problem is that I've constructed my life in a way that makes me really invulnerable to a lot of that stuff. Um, but you haven't. So it's yeah, yeah. hard to get I, the same. No, advice. no, 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 not that. I'm talking about um, like, yes, you are an insane psychopath. I no, I don't. Necessarily, I'm not even just saying that. I'm just saying like in terms of like attachments. Like, for instance, like, I don't know if I would tweet the same things that I do about Muslims if I live with Nathan. I don't know if I would. Oh, actually yeah, yeah. Those I, yeah. Well, that's I would, what I mean. Well, that, that shit's unhinged. Yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what I mean when I say like, my, like, I'm very, very, very on my own, independent. Like, it's just me right now in my life. And so like to I you, got. it's like your your threats of um your worries of violence and shit it's like you know you think you can handle it you have it under control so you're, yeah and you i don't have other people do that are being as shit. adversely affected too right i'm single now i don't i'm not dating yeah, a partner yeah, yeah, that has gotcha. to deal with a crazy amount of hate and all that so yeah it's all i can take everything and then just decide how i want to deal with things i don't have like uh, all these other people that are exposed around me i want to ask um you sometimes you know you go unhinged do you do you view that as a necessary part of growing your brand, even though you know it's going to have negative effects in the future when you're not able to do things? Yes. I because obviously, I, so, you, so you think you have to do it. You think it's like, you know this is going to cost you X debate or X interview in the future, but if you don't do it, a part of what your brand is and who you are is going to... Oh, wait, I'm sorry. What do you mean when lost? you say unhinged? You know what I mean. Like when you do like unhinged shit on Twitter. Oh, like yeah. Nebraska okay, yeah. Well, feature. I didn't know if you meant that or like when I was like arguing with people or whatever. Um, yeah, so um, so a lesson that I've learned twice now, okay? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. You're not going to fool me a third time, okay? Whatever our good friend Bush says. Um, one, thing that, uh, one thing that I've learned now through the lefty and the righties and all this bullshit is that if I attack one side too much, I have to be aware of not only who I attack, I have to be aware of who I don't attack. Because if I don't attack certain people, I'm essentially endorsing them, even if I'm not really, that's the feeling. So like, for instance, I've done this as real Palestine stuff. A lot of people have the feeling of me being incredibly pro-Palestinian, uh, or I'm sorry, pro-Israeli. So there are times where I've tried to like pick a Zionist guy to argue with, or I'll just make statements of like, listen, you know, if October 7th happened in the West Bank, okay, I'd be celebrating. Fuck you. I hate you. Uh, like, I'll, I'll make these statements just to check like the the part behind me essentially to make sure that i'm not missing some ideological hole that a bunch of my fans might be falling into because they're thinking i'm not stating a position clearly on something so that's one thing is making sure that my position is clear the second thing in terms of acting unhinged it gives me the opportunity to set the standard a little bit more for the grounds that i want to fight on so for instance when i like embrace the sexism or the racism shit and i'll just say like yeah i'm racist or yeah i'm sexist like here's my nrt pictures like what do you want to do 
people don't like you tend to use those insults against me anymore or if they do they don't like do anything right you mm -hmm. might be able to argue about a debate thing or whatever but if i if i set the stage where it's like yeah i am racist <laughs> and uh then it's like then you move on to the next thing that kind of defangs those attacks so i try to make sure that i'm uh, oh and then i also set the expectation for my own audience in terms of like who do i want to be beholden to when shit starts to hit the fan um if like there's a character, there's a person that I am, and then there's a person I present myself as online, and I want there to be as little sunlight between these things as possible. About the same as I am online. You know this. You've met me in real life. I'm about the same. Maybe a little same more. Geez. Yeah, maybe a little more edgy in real life, but about the same. Um, so it, it, as long as I'm constantly like being a little bit unhinged, like there are going to be some fans of mine that are like, "Why does Destiny do this? I hate him. He's never going to be ma mainstream." Blah blah blah. Whatever the fuck. But it checks the rest of my audience. They're like, "Oh shit! Well, this is who Destiny is." So there's never going to be a time in the future where I do something, say something, or something leaks, and people are like, "What the fuck?" Destiny does. Th Destiny makes edgy jokes, or Destiny's made like a, a racist joke or a sexist joke. It's crazy. So it's like a it's a way of like kind of resetting or constantly setting expectations for so, my audience. Okay, and so basically, right there's never like you're never awaiting the day where some like old clip comes out and they're like, "Look what I found! I got the expose on Destiny." You're like, "Bitch, I said that yesterday." Type of thing where it's like a constant flowing. There's so many takedowns of you that they kind of lose their meaning essentially yeah basically i think and then it lets me focus let's like fight about better stuff yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh yeah which is fine at least at least i can have that expectation adjustment in my own audience setting the expectations for other audiences is going kind of well but then there's challenges when i'm dealing with right now my biggest issue is uh, there's a very motivated fan base on them that doesn't like me, Groypers, the Nazi people, and they get amplified now by lefties who hate me. So, like, Hassan basically goes on stream and he is, like, following Nazi Twitter accounts now to attack me. So it's very annoying that uh, these types of things are amplified. Like, they start in one community, they're amplified by another, and then I have to deal with weird... Like, if you go through my Palestinian quote tweets, it looks like mm -hmm. I'm being attacked by Nazis or alt-writers. It's all comments about my divorce, about me being cocked, about my ex-wife and if I'm a loser and blah, 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 or uh, stuff like that. Like, that's all of the attacks and it's because Hassan will amplify uh, attacks that come from Groper communities because he hates me so much so that's been kind of interesting and annoying to deal with but also I can also just as long as I keep making content because I'm a workhorse I'll just keep doing stuff and I have a lot of longevity I outlast all these people anyway too so that helps as well what um what's up with Vosh like what happened there and like where is he at now um is he coming back into the orbit I think Vosh overestimated his mainstream appeal and he didn't realize how important it was to uh, be willing to integrate into other types of content and other platforms. He's too one-dimensional. And I think he didn't, I, I think he started a fortress arc because he got tired of taking L's and drama. And he's like, well, fuck this. I'm just not going to associate with anybody. With the assumption being that the only thing that was hurting his growth was drama. He, I think he assumed that. So he just cut the drama off, didn't associate with anybody and tried to grow independently. But the issue was that he ended up cutting himself off from everybody. He didn't reach out to new communities to grow. He didn't learn how to like uh, reinvent or keep his content fresh or relevant. Um, and then when he would wind up in drama, now he has nobody that can publicly vouch for him. He has nobody that's willing to defend him. Every other community fucking hates him. And then his You would have been that guy too. Absolutely, yeah, brought, of course. You could have brought him back probably. Yeah. Like there was a time where, um, there was a time where Vosh, uh, there was a time where Vosh, I think, uh, was ahead of me in subscribers on YouTube, and now I've like almost doubled it. Really? I don't. I don't know. Didn't know that. Wait, am I exaggerating that? I'm sorry. Wait, am I eight hundred thousand or nine hundred thousand? Wait, I might be exaggerating a bit. Ah. Let me check. <laughs> He's at 450, so double would be 900, and I'm at 776, so yeah. It's possible that if I can hit a million subs by the end of the year, if I do get to a million at the end of the year, which would be a lot of growth, I don't know if that's possible. Uh, if I did hit a million at the end of the year, I think I would have doubled him in subs. I think something else that I've realized in online content creation that's very interesting to me is to see what happens um, after dramas. Um, and I noticed that I'm pretty sure for most of, if not all of the major drama that I've been in, I tend to grow afterwards, meaning there are people that don't like me and there are people that do. And I try my best to appeal to the people that do and the people that don't wouldn't have liked me anyway. I think I tend to grow after most of, if not all of the big dramas I've been in. Vosh tends to lose after every big drama that he's been in, with the exception of one, which is when he was shitting on Anna and he was getting uh, basically big ups from other lefties that started to hate Anna. But other than that, what, yeah, um, he, he gets... What, a, what, what is your viewer count? now like the real viewer count because like i have no idea what the kick number actually is but like you kick, kick numbers are 100 accurate i think my concurrent if i'm really? doing like political stuff is around 10k now 
Oh, so what what is what are the kick numbers at now? Um, I think I have about one point five k on that right now. Okay. Um. Interesting. How do you how are you liking kick as the platform? I know you're you've actually you've really committed to using it, and I think that's that's good. Um, how are you how are you liking it? Um, I think it's fine. I think the software up. Grades that they did to their site and the chat and everything keeps it pretty smooth. I like all of the uh, like the emotes and the gifts and everything are cute for the chat experience. Um, I feel like on a tech side, I feel like Kick is basically there. I mean, I don't know how they would scale. Well, they don't have to scale. I'm sorry, they've got um, not VPS. Um, the uh, Twitch video streaming services. Um, oh my God, what am I thinking of? IVS. Yeah, Jesus. Uh, so they can scale infinitely. Uh, I think Kick's problem now is just grabbing. It's like developing culture on the site, and it's uh, grabbing large streamers and communities, basically. What's going to happen to Twitch? Because you know they they have to be thinking Twitch Prime's going away soon. Like if they're if they're lean, lean this way, normally you'd be like Dan. <laughs> I've only been predicting this for like five years. <laughs> I I have, but I'm telling you, the belt tightening is coming, and you know why? There's no way that they wouldn't be thinking about this while they also completely exit Korea. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what the point of that was. That was pretty wild. Like they have to be serious fucking belt tightening right now. If like, t like I can't believe that we were let's completely ban a country before we get rid of this fucking free money system feature. It has to. Well, I think the operational costs there were prohibitive. So why get rid of Prime that would maybe hurt your entire international market when you could just ditch one country? How prohibitive could that one country be in costs? I think Korea was pretty prohibitive. I think they have really big upcharges in certain types of content. That was that's my understanding at least. You feel like YouTube is still the superior platform for streaming? And mm. do you think YouTube is still taking streaming even seriously? It feels like the streaming wars are over. Do you remember, dude, there was like a period like yeah. Was it like two or three years ago? I was like, oh, you have caffeine and you have Twitch and you have all these fuckers like trying to fight to go after streamers and do deals. And now it feels like Twitch gave up. Kick is taking whatever leftovers or whoever gets banned from fucking Twitch. And then YouTube is like the other option. Um, so I don't the pro yeah. the issue is that like I don't think YouTube has really upgraded much on the tech side of stuff. And I think it's still a big problem with chats don't have like consistent URLs or, or uh, permanent static URLs, which is really mm -hmm. annoying. Also working with Google APIs and everything is a fucking nightmare clusterfuck because it's obviously a larger org and everything. Um, it's gonna be harder to get responses and stuff from staff if you're trying to build anything custom, which is annoying as fuck. Um, so Google has their problems for sure. I, I really do think that YouTube's biggest advantage is the fact that they can rewind their videos and the fact that they've got the viewer base there. Hmm. Uh, yeah. What about uh has Facebook completely exited, you know? I don't even know. It's gotta be weird the people that are still fucking streaming on uh on Facebook. Like who the fuck is going there? Yeah. Um I, I don't know. There there's still people. Like you'll Facebook you'll come across streaming. like there's, there's like or Facebook gaming, is that what it's called? I thought people got rid of their gaming shit and just rolled it into their normal stuff. Like, there's no more YouTube gaming, right? There hasn't been for years. Yeah. Dude. Dude. Steven. Daniel. I've heard good things about the Apple fucking VR shit. Oh, so have I. I've heard good things, but... But the good things come from people that go and do things daily. And that's not me. I just sit on my ass all day. So I'm, I'm almost wondering, is the experience going to be better than the four monitor setup that I have now or not? You know, and the big question is, when is uh, when is certain HD video content coming to that device? Because that's going to be it's already super nuts. HD and shit, isn't it? There's this certain categories of video that I think that's going to be the killer app. I've seen or... people say that like right now the quote unquote killer app for it seems to just be watching movies in bed. Yeah, I think... no, I, yeah. I, I, I think that is going to be the killer app, but like, yeah, you're not, you're not picking up what I'm putting down, Steve. That's fine. Whether there's something more, what porn related or what do you, what? Well, you said that I was, you're, you're such a deviant. Your mind goes there immediately. No, oh. I was thinking about, um, gaming, of course, you know, gaming is going to be amazing. Oh, maybe. 
Yeah, uh, I'll probably wait till the second edition. It's like, isn't it like four thousand yeah, dollars for the Apple Vision Pro? Everyone does that. Everyone does that. But like, you're rich. Can you just buy it? Just, just do it. Just be a first. Well, gen I don't want to buy it because it's supposed to be really heavy on your head. That's why I'm waiting for the second generation, not for the cost to come down, but because it, I don't want all the huh. bullshit. Mm. You want to know something crazy? My microwave is making crazy noises. That or what? What no. else? No, I can take a look. By the way, I know a little bit about about electricity now. I'm okay. Kind of an well, right now the bottom plate, when it spins, after like two minutes, it stops spinning. It just starts making noises. I don't know why. It's fucking annoying. It's gonna um, explode. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. I, I have lost my my claim my train train of thought. I don't misspeak, and it only happens. How does it happen to me when I come back here? It's something. It has to be something with this setup here. The feedback of the audio. Probably or... misspeak like everybody does. You just don't recognize it in real life. It no, I would, it. It. Okay. I would recognize it. I would recognize it because okay. I'm very in tune with my speaking. And I'll say this. It's because of you that this exists. This whole misspeaking thing. And you know the sweet justice? The sweet justice is I see that you've banned it. Because I'm not here anymore, and there's no one to do it to, so they only do it to you. And I know you're doing a little bit of misspeaks happening, and there's a lot of he omegalols, and, and you can't you can't nuke it. Yeah, well, you know? I do nuke it. The only issue is just that it destroys any serious conversation happening. Same thing with it. Whenever Obama is brought up, I end up just nuking it. It's just fucking retarded. Hmm. Um. Yeah. Well, anyways, that's it. I think I'm. I'm. You know. I'll come back for a little bit. Well, like the John Wick back thing, kind of being forced into it a little bit, but that's fine. Well, uh, <laughs> it's hard to take you seriously with this noise in the background, Stephen. I don't know why it does this. Is it the okay? Is it the glass? I need you to go look at it. And it is the glass. It, the problem is that it like is it, the, I think it stops spinning. It's acting like it's stuck, but if you roll it a little bit, it keeps moving. I don't know okay, why it does that, this. You know? Okay, so you have the glass plate. And yeah, then I under understand. The glass yes, plate, there are three wheels that roll underneath. Yeah. Yes, the three wheels they are not aligned. You need to align, align the three wheels. Let me check. They Hold are on. not Here aligned. There's little holes for them to go inside of in that little center piece. You need to align the holes with with them. He doesn't know, chat. I'm right. Cover your eyes. Okay, I don't know why. It's still spinning, okay? Fuck it. It's fine. Okay. Um, it's, it's very distracting. What's being cooked that's so important right now? I don't know. Lycan left food for me because he went out of town. Where'd he... What is up with Lycan, by the way? Am I going to have to have a talk with this guy? I feel like I've been gone too long, and he's gone off the fucking deep end. I feel like I can I can take him back. You know the problem is you're too nice to do it. Okay, I can well, just... try it. I can do it. Okay. Well, I'll be cheering you, for you. You don't think I can do it? I don't know. Try it. We'll see what happens. Lycan, I can save you. I, I'm one of the only people. I can do it. Because I understand you. Um, he's beyond the deep end? Would you Would you say that? He's beyond the deep end? Um, Lycan is a reasonable, fact-based man. And as such, he should be able to have any views okay. that are wrong. Then try it. You can be that we can set up. That's the ultimate. That's the finality of the Israel-Palestine arc. It's Dan versus Lycan. Okay. I, I need to I need to be his team member, his partner. That's right. how you take him back, not the other way around. So you're going to Israel. Have you um so this is like a real thing that's happening, huh? I want it to be. I need to talk to. I need to. I keep getting distracted by other shit. But I need to have a conversation with Lonerbox and figure out like the problem is I don't know how formal. Like there's a lot of questions and stuff I want to ask. And I think since I have so much background now, it could be like pretty insightful. It'd be interesting and it'd be fun to like do a serious trip and talk to a lot of different types of people. I mean, um, are you trying to do like on the street interviews? Kind of, yeah. But the issue isn't now. I don't know how because it, it would. This is something it would be like a full on documentary, and I need like a team of people to put the video together. I don't know if I could just release this as clips. So I have to balance out like how serious I want it to be versus how. Like, Dude, sure. there was a there was a YouTube channel, and I'm sure people have spammed it to you a million times over the last five months. But there was a YouTube channel, and all the dude did was he would make YouTube videos where he would walk around and ask um, Israeli people and Arab people like a random question, like, "Hey, do you think um, you know what?" It, it didn't matter, and like that's all this dude uh, traveling Israel. Maybe that was it. That that content was super engaging. Mm -hmm. um, you could do that type of stuff, but it's kind of wild. 
Like, oh, maybe, yeah. Especially now. Like, I mean, you're not going into Gaza, obviously. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Dude. It's fine. This you is can just, buy a new microwave. It's an older I'm not buying a microwave for my apartment. It's an apartment. Why the f that's their job. You can, okay, well, you can take the microwave with you when you leave. It can become your microwave. That, no, that sounds heavy as, how much is a fucking microwave weigh? These are going to weigh like 150 pounds. No fucking shot. Wait, wait, hold on, wait. 70. I'm going to guess sincerely. Hold on. I would say that I've been a microwave weighs, I'm going to guess 60 pounds. Yeah, wait. I think that's accurate. 50 to 60. Okay. I think it depends on the wattage. How much do microwaves weigh? Like Around a big 55 boy, a pounds. Big boy, a big boy. See, I said 50 to 60. You said 60. Because I said, didn't I say 50? No. Well, it doesn't matter. You only said one, and I said a range. That means I was more accurate. Ranges are cringe. That means that you were less precise. By me saying 50 to 60, I should have actually just said 55. Because that would be But you exactly... didn't, and that's the issue, because you were too afraid well, to stake out a strong was, position. Was, You're a coward. No, no, I'm not. I was saying that so that your mind could comprehend it. If I said 55, you'd be like, damn, that's ridiculous. Or or you would accuse me of Googling it, which is ridiculous, because I can't probably, do that beforehand. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like I shouldn't say something. Say about it. Something. Say it, pussy. Martin Shkreli plays on my Rust server, and we fucking dominate him constantly, and it's super awkward. Why is it awkward? Why I don't know, matter? because like he's been on the stream, and I don't know. I'm like, well, I don't know. That's that's it. Uh, it's just wild. Okay. Well, thanks for letting us know. Oh, that's very dismissive, what you've done right now. Your microwave doesn't agree with... You know. <sighs> well, I need to eat. My gym closed at 11. I do have to go down. All right, fine. Time. Fuck yeah. off. Why don't, you do, why don't you stop coming at, like, the literally the last ends of oh, our stream? Oh, you want to know? It's because from fucking, like, 10 a.m. until 2 p.m., it's, like, deep, insane fucking ADHD riddling buried in wikipedia and then from like 3 to 6 p.m it's like oh yes i'm talking with uh professor uh normanstein and uh it's a very intense debate that's why i can't fucking come in here because there's no fucking times and it's either that or it's like okay now we're going to fucking kick or keep it's like all right you know what fuck it that's all, that's all i have this is it there's like fucking 20 minutes maybe okay that's on you all right and you you've Padded the walls with insane fucking people on yeah. all all you've made it as inhospitable as possible for the dans and moots of the world. Let me just say that this is like a fucking this is a hot potato coal being in here. Mm -hmm. Me and Moot talk about it sometimes. Like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go on. Today's the day. We're gonna do it. And it was like, yeah, we're gonna do it. And then I was like, Moot, we can't do it. It's like, oh yeah, I know. My uh, I couldn't bring myself to do it. That's how it goes. It's, it's your fault. You've pushed it to the brink of insanity. Okay. Well, I love you. I'll see you later, okay? Be careful, babe. All right. Later. Bye. Bye. Okay. I need to eat and leave. Somebody made a three-minute Hassan clip. What is this? Side on the basis of me. That's not what he's saying. That's what you are saying for sure. Wait, what? He literally said international law has never been used in any of the past 100 years of conflict, which is not even true. They did literally talk about Bosnia earlier, so suck my- What? I said that I said that they haven't been used for the bilateral agreements that Israel's made for other countries. Why would I say international law hasn't been used in 100 years? There have literally been like courts convened and shit, the fucking Nuremberg trials and shit like this that have been convened on understandings of like international obligations or, yeah, the tribunal on Yugoslavia and Okay. My dick. And secondly, that is exactly what he said. He said, international law has never been used. Cope? I'm not the one engaging in copium, brother. Your boy got his shit pushed in so fucking hard by like a 900-year-old demon who doesn't even fucking use a cell phone that you have to come in here and literally argue on behalf of your daddy, okay? And argue on behalf of your daddy failing to fucking even present a reasonable argument in defense of a genocidal apartheid regime. <laughs> Oof. Genocidal apartheid. Oof. Oof. Couldn't read his own book. What? Couldn't read his own book. The fuck are you talking Eat. about? Dude, 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 dude. This is what happens when like a fucking mentat who is basically the human version of Wikipedia on this conflict meets a dude who just browses Wikipedia to create post hoc rationalizations for arguments that are devoid of like really important fundamental facts, establishing principles like 
I wish you could like lock people in a room and force them to just like absorb 100 hours of content. Has this, I don't think Hassan has read a meaningful thing on this conflict in his entire life. Like, it's funny that he's pretending like he's so well educated, you know, so much, and he's like, oh, I talk to journalists. No, you don't. You bring up people to circle jerk with you. You've never had an adversarial conversation with somebody on Israel Palestine, except for the one time. There was one time, I admit, where he did seek out intense criticism, and he spoke with, um, who is it? He's like a world renowned, preeminent uh, Israeli Palestinian historian, uh, William Mack. Willie Mack. That was it, I remember. Hassan did do the conversation with Willie Mack, okay? To be fair. Like, this is the guy who says he's known for years about this conflict, and he'll, like, retweet people saying, I don't know where Israel is. Like, meanwhile, uh, remember, this guy was born in Turkey, okay? This guy was born and lived in Turkey, I think, until he was 18? Uh, until he went I to don't college? Know which is which, dude? Close the cookies? Oh, yeah, true. Doesn't know where Yemen is? Okay, I'm gonna click close. I'm gonna, I'm. Like, bro, this is where you lived. This is the country where you lived, right here, remember? When you were. Until you were 18? Do you remember that country? <laughs> I'm closing it. I'm closing it. I think I... Like, nope. why nope. are you clicking countries that are literally bordering your country? You said you've been doing reports on Yemen since 2015. No. Nope. Why nope. are you... No. Nope. Nope. Why are you clicking? <laughs> nope. 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 Got it. It's just so stupid. But it's not even a good attack of Hassan. Like, if I'm going to criticize Hassan's position, I'm going to criticize, like, the 50 million stupid things that he said. Not, like, here's him failing a fucking map game. But, I mean, like, if he's going to amplify those attacks on me, it's like, well, what the fuck, bro? Establishing principles, like, this is what happens. You went up against a dude who is the Wikipedia. This is the Wikipedia that he has. And you want to know how it was such a fucking evisceration, like, such a ruthless takedown. It's not even, like, the uh -oh. Twitter people chirping and saying, lol, it's so funny, he called him a Mr. Borelli, Mr. Boner funny, he called him a Mr. Borelli, Mr. Bonarelli, whatever. That stuff is fun. But you know, you know he got fucking his shit pushed in because, one, he didn't even fucking watch the footage himself, didn't want his audience to see it, quickly, two, moved on to... What? Weren't we already reacting to it before Hassan was? Then I, wa I watched it literally three or four hours after it came out. Didn't I? Thanks, JC ATX. Thanks for the five gifted subs. Fucking watch the footage himself. Didn't want his audience to see it. Quickly, too, moved on to try to get me banned for watching it from from uh, Twitch. And last but not least, hold on. Been... I just was reminding people. I think it's really weird and unfair that my friends get banned when they watch my content. But somehow Hassan, who propagates rape apology and denialism and terrorist apology and denialism, uh, is allowed to watch me with impunity. Also, if my content is so damaging and so horrible for Twitch, I don't know why Twitch would host it. I think that's really disgusting. Uh, and if Hassan is too much of a pussy ass baby bitch to be included in any of these conversations, which he is, I don't know why he would sit here and try to commentate on him. Clearly, it's like above you and beyond you. So why pretend like you have anything of value to say? You know, listen, if Twitch bans you, that's on them. That's their rules. I'm not trying to get anybody banned. I never told anybody to go ban anything. I just think it's weird how hypocritical Twitch is on their uh, on their banning policies. It's really weird. Coping the fucking ref uh, replies nonstop. And one of his funniest copes has been, well, he was just quoting stuff too much. You just, that's it. You have cons That wasn't my issue. My issue wasn't that he was quoting too much. My issue is that he was quoting things, divorced from the context, sitting across the table from the historian that wrote the quote. Seated. You have been bested in the marketplace of ideas when you're fucking, when your only takedown is basically going, yeah, sorry, uh, I didn't know he had hands like that, intellectually speaking. You know what I mean? Like, you just literally did that. You mentally said, well, this is unfair. He has hands. I didn't know he had hands like that. I did not think that he could do that. He cheated by quoting people, some of which were in the room themselves. That's messed up, man. What a weird summary of mine. So if you ask me, since Gaza is one of the densest places on Earth, it inside on the basis of... Based. Somebody said he's watching me right now? No shot. Oh. He very clearly detailed exactly his line of argumentation and why well, it's he's wrong. Still watch why is he watching because me do a map game? <laughs> what the fuck? Sessions from the Arafat team multiple times. <laughs> he did not address a single point that they made and simply just washed over it and said... No, there were no concessions because it doesn't feel like there are any good concessions that he gave. Now I'm moving beyond his feelings 
and showing you why his feelings are relatively unimportant in the matter. Oh. Because who gives a fuck what his feelings are on the situation? They're Wait. addressing historical facts. What were the historical facts? But beyond that... What were the historical facts? His feelings extra don't matter in this circumstance because he's also devoid of, like, the factual basis to develop feelings on the issue. He's just feeling from the outside. Oh, no, I did get Yemen right in this video. Oh, no. <laughs> Unless we're just going to debate on, like, we're going to have actual fucking academics on to, to, to talk about your own oh, personal feelings. Oh, I must feelings. have like, memorized. Yeah, sorry, dude. If I'm hitting all of these, then I must have memorized the countries by this point, right? I don't think the Palestinians what is he even watching real, here? Real, uh, you know, justified... Uh, oh, white is right? Here. Oh, shit. Then I got way more. At least he could have done... At least the least he could have done is like address <laughs> some of the talking points, right? If you're going to talk about how oh, the did he just cover me up? <laughs> concessions. It's he a Twitter video. About like oh, what, true, it is. Those, I see how, how unreasonable those concessions were. For example, oh, oh, course, I see. We stepped into another. Uh, we stepped into another Hassan research stream. Can't you tell? Ah, Twitter, Twitter, YouTube, 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 Twitter, 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 YouTube, Twitter. Twitter, YouTube, Twitter, 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 Twitter. What is this? What is this phone monitor thing? What is this? It makes it louder. Volume Chrome extension. I'm a nerd when it comes to the whole peace process. These knowledge are absolutely embarrassing. Months before negotiations started, Amos Malka, Shimbet research head, told the cabinet Arafat couldn't accept less than 93% of the West Bank. That territory is the primary issue, and the refugees was a lever chip. Barack literally refused to accept that and replied, you think I'm offering, you think if I offered him 90%, he wouldn't accept? Nonsense. But that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened, so though, in the, in the discussions. It was more than that was offered. Uncertainty of these people, uh, these people have without an inch of self-reflection pisses me off to no end. Yeah, 100%. True. Okay, I don't have time to mold over this. What is this? Okay, dude, yeah, I don't. Shut up. Okay. Nope, that was a failure. Oh, that was Pakistan. good. What do you click? Kazakhstan? China? Is it China? It's, uh, it's Pakistan down here? No. La Myanmar, maybe? Oh, no. India? Nepal? No. Okay, it's down here somewhere. There we, we go. got it. Nice, good one. Oh, this is the whole game? Five and a half minutes? Six minutes? Okay. Excuse okay. All right, tomorrow we'll go over more stuff. Fuck me. It'll be the rest of this, because I didn't even go over all of it. And then it'll be the um, H3H3 video and shit, okay? Did you see the Dershowitz article about Finkelstein being on the list of speakers of the Iranian Holocaust Denial Conference? No, but also, I don't know if I trust Dershowitz. I feel like I've heard him debate and speak before, and I just, I don't... Uh, I think he's a little weird, I'm not sure. But I, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Hassan still going on, going on about the Twitter tab's destiny. Wait, well, I don't have time. Listen, I love you guys. Be careful. Ribbon and Cappuccino, Papuccino, Hopuccino, Mopuccino, Dabuccino, Cappuccino, Apuccino, Apuccino, my dinners. I will catch you guys next. Oh, wait. Oh, no. I wrote about Yemen and U.S. involvement in 2016 while I was still at the Young Turks, and a chatter just reminded me. Many people must ask themselves what their opinions looked like back then. Mine haven't changed. This video's still relevant. Oh, okay, hold on. I'm so sorry. Not, well, now I got to tweet out the clip. Now I have to do it. Okay, dude. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I love you guys. It's been fun. I'll see you later. Peace out.